Hi everyone, welcome back to Ashton Sixth Form College Chemistry Department YouTube channel. What we're going to be doing is naming some multifunctional group organic compounds. So I'm assuming that you understand what skeletal formula is. If you don't, can you please make sure that you watch the skeletal formula video, which is also on this AS playlist on the ASFC Chemistry channel. What I'm going to do first is I'm going to number out the longest continuous carbon chain for this particular molecule. Now I'm going to number this one from left to right and I'll explain the origin of why I've done that after I've numbered it, but it will make sense. For now, you've just got to trust me. So I can see I've got my first carbon here at the end. So I've got one, two, three. Now I can go in either direction here. I can either go four, five, six, seven, or I can just go four and that would be the end of the chain. But of course, if I just go four here, that's not gonna be the longest continuous chain. It doesn't have to be the chain that goes in the straight line. It just has to be the longest continuous chain. So I'm gonna keep going and I've got a seven carbon chain. Now what that tells me is that I'm gonna have hept. So I'm gonna have hept as my longest continuous carbon chain component. What do I do now? Well now I need to look at the carbons that have got additional reactive groups on them, which are the functional groups. So I've got one at carbon two, just there. I've got something at carbon three, and I've also got something at carbon four just here. So what have I got at each carbon? Let's go through them systematically. I've got here at carbon two, I've got an alcohol group. Now this is going to be 2-ol as part of the name structure. The ol tells me that it's an alcohol, and the two number tells me whereabouts on the carbon chain that functional group particularly is. What about what's on carbon three? Well, it's not drawn out for us because it just looks like a line. It just looks like a stick. But at the end of this is actually a CH3. So that is a methyl and it's on carbon three. So as part of the name, that is going to be three methyl. You'll notice already that I'm putting dashes between the numbers and the words, and that's important. The last functional group I've got here of interest is I've got a fluorine here on carbon number four. So that's gonna be a four fluoro, like so. I've got hept as the longest continuous chain, and I've got no unsaturated bonds in here. So I know I've also got ane, since I've just got carbon-carbon single bonds. I've got saturated bonds throughout the structure. I've got no alkene group or alkyne group in this, so I can make sure I just use ane. Then I need to assemble everything together and we assemble it in alphabetical order. Now this alphabetical order only implies at first to these two groups because these two are my prefixes. These always come before the root part of the name and the root is this bit here, the bit I did first where everything starts from. So these are gonna come before it so I'm gonna list them alphabetically. So my name at the bottom down here is going to be 4 fluoro 3 methyl Now I'm listing them alphabetically. And just to explain as well why I chose this numbering sequence, why I chose to number them from left to right, is because these numbers now as a combination are going to give me the smallest possible outcome. And because I've got an oxygen containing group, we tend to try and give that the smallest number possible whenever we can. So I then need to put my root part of the name, my hept just there. I then need to put in that I've got only saturated carbon bonds, but I'm not gonna need this E. And the reason I drop the E is because I've got a suffix group at the end here, and it's just one of that suffix group. I would keep the E there if I had multiple alcohol groups, but we'll save that for another video. What I need to do now then is heptan 2 ol because now this part of the name is called the suffix. And the suffix, if I have more than one of them, I still list them in alphabetical order, like I did with the prefixes here, but I've only got the one so it doesn't really matter. And so the name of this molecule is 4-fluoro-3-methyl-heptan-2-ol. What we're going to do now is just going to go through another quick example. 
So as promised, here's our second example. What we're going to do first is determine what the root of the carbon chain is. So I start off down here. I've got one, two, three, four. Now I can go fork in the road. I can either go this way or that way. So I've got five, six, that would be there, but that would be five, six, seven, eight, nine. So I can keep going here. So I'm going to do five, six, seven, eight, nine. So what that tells me, since I've got a nine carbon chain, which is my longest continuous chain, this is going to be none. What I've got here though, at carbon four, this is an ethyl group. And since it's at carbon four, we're going to put four ethyl on just here. What have I got at carbon three? Well, at carbon three, I've got an alcohol group, so I'm going to use three ol. And what do I have between carbon six and seven? Well, first off, I'm going to purely talk about carbon six when I refer to this, because it is an alkene bond. And this is going to be six N. Now the N here means that I'm definitely not going to reference anything to do with ain when I name my carbon chain. I'm going to have to use the N now. Sometimes you use ene, but I know I've got multiple suffixes here, so I am going to immediately try and uh, edge towards just using the n instead of the ene. So let's put the name together. How many prefixes do I have? Well, I've only got one, and it's the 4-ethyl. So I can list that first, 4-ethyl. Then I've got none as my root. And then I've got 6n, 3-ol. You can see here, these are my suffixes, and here I've got my prefix, and they're all orientated around the root part of the name just here. Hopefully that clears up some organic chemistry for you, naming some multiple organic group compounds. Please enjoy the rest of the playlist, and make sure you watch our new videos on equilibria. Otherwise, happy revising.